Egypt is setting its sights on the goal of becoming the seventh richest country in the world by 2030. Cairo, for example, is considered the capital of the Arab worlds, and it has a population of nearly 20 million people. And the population of Greater Cairo is expected to double in the next few decades. The Egyptian government has made plans to achieve sustainability by 2030. Egypt is also facing another major issue, which is drying up the Cairo lifeline. The River Nile is one of the world's most ancient and legendary waterways, bringing life to otherwise inhospitable regions of Egypt. Around 60% of the Nile's water originates from the Samayan Mountains in Ethiopia. But the problem is, is that in recent times, it has been noted and analyzed that it is slowly drying up, and its tributaries are also depleting in terms of quantity of water, which is a huge threat to gazillions of creatures that inhabit the Nile's water. In the past, parts of the river have already dried, which resulted in the vanishing of entire cities like ancient Monroe. This time around, a major construction process upriver is jeopardizing the health of the river. So let us dig right into the cause and solution of this impeding tragedy. Farmers in Egypt claim that their land sees almost no water in summers, due to which the Egyptian government guided the farmers to use water-efficient means of irrigation and grow plants of the kind that grow with less water. This is not the first time, though, that the Nile's tributaries have lacked water. Just look at this 10,000 years condition of the Nile, and the panoramic view shows us grasslands, rivers, and lakes full of water and life blooming everywhere, making the horizon feel lush and rich. Over time, and enhanced climate changes, the river kept drying and drying. And from the standpoint of today, if we try to visualize the future, a huge catastrophe is coming our way in slow motion. The delta and the river together were long the source of Egypt's wealth and greatness. They now face relentless assault from both land and sea. The most recent danger is a gigantic dam, which is being made at the headwaters of the Blue Nile. Keeping the fact in mind that the Blue Nile supports 59% of Egypt's water, Ethiopia's public government has to a great extent self-financed the $5 billion Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam with the guarantee that it will create 60,000 megawatts of electrical power. That is nothing to joke about for Ethiopians, three-fourths of whom currently need admittance to power. The offer of abundance power to different nations in the district could likewise acquire $1 billion every year and seriously required unfamiliar trade income. GERD can just start to meet these guaranteed benefits, in any case, by keeping downstream water that would some way or another pass down the Nile to Sudan, and afterward, Egypt. And that is no joking matter for both these nations, to such an extent that, as indicated by WikiLeaks, government authorities in Cairo at one point discussed airborne besieging, or a commando strike to obliterate the dam. The dam will make a repository over two times the size of the Hoover Dams, which is the biggest supply in the United States. It will eventually confide 74 billion cubic meters of Blue Nile water. That is around 64 million sections of land feet or the quantity of water needed to cover 100,000 square miles of land, one foot down. Filling this reservoir might go on to take somewhere in the range of 5 to 15 years. A study in the Geological Society of America's platform, GSA Today reports, the Nile's new water stream to Egypt might be cut by 25%, with a deficiency of 33% of the power produced by the Aswan High Dam. This is Egypt's monstrous dam on the Nile, finished in 1965, about 15,000 miles downstream. The GSA study, driven by Smithsonian Institution geologist Jean Daniel Stanley says Egypt faces genuine far-reaching freshwater and energy lack by 2025. Agriculture in the Delta, which amounts to about 60% of Egypt's food, could likewise experience the ill effects of deficiencies of water system water. Egypt is already one of the poorest nations in the world in terms of water availability per capita. It has just 660 cubic meters of fresh water a year for each resident, compared to, for instance, 9,800 cubic meters in the United States. Notwithstanding the practically certain deficiency of land region in the delta, the blend of ocean level ascent and land subsidence will likewise expand saltwater interruption, which would jeopardize more than a third of freshwater volume in the delta. So now the question that arises is that what sort of efforts did Egyptian stakeholders make to stop the damage. Well, the Egyptian president met the Ethiopian prime minister on cordial terms, and they do agree upon the idea, but a formal document is still missing. Ethiopia can minimize the immediate downstream damage by lengthening the time it takes to fill the reservoir. 
but that means delaying the benefits of the dam, which Ethiopia may already have oversold. So guys, with that, the video about the drought of the Nile essentially ends. Do let us know what, to you, is the most interesting aspect of this video, and how do you foresee the condition of the Nile in the upcoming decade or two in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to our channel. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.